What is multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma is a blood disorder that uh, is thought to originate from plasma cells. It's a disease that happens in about 30,000 Americans every year. There are more than 120,000 Americans living with the disease. In updated 2023 myeloma statistics, about 36,000 new cases happened in the United States, and about 160,000 Americans are living with myeloma. It is a disease that can present itself in very many different ways. Some patients can have the disease without being really that sick, and some patients unfortunately can have a very rapid disease process. The disease can manifest in fractures, it can manifest in high levels of calcium in the body that makes the person very sick, and it can result in acute kidney failure that can be due to both the calcium and protein that the disease also leaks out in the blood. When we study the disease in the laboratory, and we have started using very sophisticated assays when we do profiling of the DNA and the RNA, we see that every patient with myeloma has very many alterations genomically. We have seen that there are many, many parallel subtypes of myeloma going on at the same time in that same patient. And it's different across different patients. I do think when we treat patients with multiple myeloma with our best treatments, I strongly believe that we probably cure the patient from some of these subsets of the disease. But there are some subsets of the disease that we don't get rid of, unfortunately, and we are working on that. So when we follow patients over time, when the disease comes back, those subsets can come back and they can be more aggressive. It may not happen at the first relapses, but it could happen at later relapses. Multiple myeloma is a cancer of a white blood cell called a plasma cell. I tell them that normal plasma cells reside in the bone marrow and are responsible for producing antibodies to fight off infection. And if one of these plasma cells develops the right set of mutations and chromosome alterations, that it will unfortunately uh, start to grow out of control and increasingly occupy uh, the bone marrow. And when that happens, then we start to see some of the manifestations that we typically think of with multiple myeloma. The myeloma starts to overgrow the bone marrow. We see anemia. Those myeloma cells are sending signals to bone breaking down cells to break down bones. So you start to see bone damage. You see the calcium leaching out of the bone, leading to high levels of calcium in the bloodstream. And, you know, even though these um, plasma cells are cancerous, they're still making antibody. And occasionally those antibodies, especially light chain antibodies, can deposit in the kidney and cause kidney damage. What Dr. Voorhees has just described is known as the CRAB criteria, or symptoms of myeloma. Calcium builds up in the blood, causing hypercalcemia, or too much calcium. Renal or kidney disease can be caused by a buildup of antibodies produced by the cancerous myeloma plasma cells. Anemia can develop as red blood cells get crowded out by those proliferating cells. And bone damage can develop from too much breaking down of the bone caused by the myeloma cells. I think it's important for all patients to understand that while we don't necessarily view multiple myeloma as curable, at least for the majority of patients, you know, I think that the therapy has become increasingly effective. The overwhelming majority of patients will respond to treatment. And particularly for those patients who have standard risk disease, uh, that you know, initial remission can last many years. Um, myeloma is a cancer of the immune system. It's a cancer of a very particular type of the, a component of the immune system, the so-called plasma cell. And I'm biased, but I consider her the queen of the immune system because plasma cells are remarkably sophisticated. They really know what they're doing. They've got tremendous uh, mechanisms for memory, for regeneration, for dormancy, waking up, and doing all sorts of amazing things when we're infected and we need an immune system that responds to a bug. The challenge is when that goes malignant and the queen becomes a bad queen, we're in real trouble. And the plasma cell produces lots of redundant protein because it's not doing the right thing. And these cells grow cleverly but uncontrollably. And in that context can cause tremendous uh, organ damage and at the same time can attack bone, the bone marrow, cause infections because they suppress normal immune system components and at the same time attack the kidney. Uh, generating a high level of protein that can also in turn 
thicken the blood, and these can result in all sorts of manifestations. Most important of all is that they make patients very symptomatic, and patients feel tired, exhausted, flu-like, bone pain. It, it really has a whole uh, a spectrum of, of effects um, that make people feel really lousy. And so in that setting, not only is it very dangerous, but it makes people feel very, very ill as well. And in that context, therefore, initial treatment for active disease is very important. And obviously, that's a mainstay of what we do in, in myeloma treatment. So multiple myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells. So plasma cells is one type of white blood cell that helps our body fight infection. And why the plasma cell becomes cancerous, we don't quite understand, but we feel that there is probably a, some genetic component and significant environmental component that makes this um, plasma cells become abnormal. Now, just the abnormality in the plasma cell by itself is not very uncommon, especially in the older patients. Almost 5 to 6% of patients over 70 might have an abnormal a clone of uh, plasma cells that makes a monoclonal protein, but the majority of the people, it does not progress to myeloma. So we are still trying to also understand why some people be, uh, turn to myeloma and some people don't. What causes myeloma is difficult to narrow down. In terms of what we can do for the myeloma, there are a lot of different treatments that can keep the myeloma under control for a long period of time. We can't quite say that we can cure the myeloma, but we seem to be making a steady progress toward that. We need to better understand how these processes work. We need to develop better drugs, and we need to absolutely develop better tools for tracking of the disease. I started treating patients quite a few years ago with myeloma. At that time, the average survival was only one to three years. And I was advised by senior doctors and mentors that I should probably not focus on myeloma because it was really a disease where there has not been a lot of development. I thought that was a great opportunity and I'm very glad I, I took that path. It has been just amazing to see during the past few years how survival has improved. I think we are now at the point where the average patient that is offered optimal therapy probably has an overall survival, I would guess, on average 10 to 20 years. And I also know that there are very many new drugs in development. So I think during those coming 10, 20 years, there will be very many new drugs that will come to clinic. So I think there could be patients that could live with a disease and live a very, very long life, and also with very good quality of life. It should be said that there could be rough spots because we don't have yet a cure, and that's what we need to focus on trying to come up with that. 